Hey guys, what's going on? Rico Garcia here, founder of Ecotech Pro. Today, I wanna to make this quick video talking about hoarding and overall safety and some of the things that you might uh, want to go ahead and pay attention to. Now, first and foremost, um, one of the things that comes to mind that's extremely important that we definitely wanna go ahead and have a conversation with, um, you know, the homeowner of a hoarding situation is overall indoor air quality. Now, indoor air quality comes in many forms and there's a lot of things that could potentially affect affect indoor air quality. Some of these include uh, overall uh, just dust, the odors uh, that come from the property, uh, ammonia from, uh, you know, waste that's kind of breaking down, and of course, uh, rat droppings or feces, which, you know, is a whole other set of issues, uh, which could cause uh, something called HPS, which is the hantavirus. Um, and any one of these scenarios could really cause uh, a lot of issues breathing as well as as respiratory issues, um, and it's certainly something for everyone to go ahead and kind of take into consideration. Um, the next thing that we want to talk about is overall mold, mildew, and fungus. Now, what happens with all of this, right? So a lot of this comes from actually uh, having issues throwing away uh, food, right? A lot of hoarding situations and hoarding projects, uh, what ends up happening is there's a lot of uh, takeout or delivery that just gets kind of, you know, forgotten about and put off to the side or on top of a large stack of belongings. Um, a lot of times what also happens is in severe hoarding situations, the way to the uh, refrigerator gets blocked off and inevitably a lot of food uh, ends up going bad inside of the refrigerator just because the person doesn't even have access to uh, the refrigerator. Now, of course, all of this, uh, you know, food being broken down, forgotten about, uh, can ca cause a lot of indoor air quality issues, including, uh, you know, mold growth and a lot of other scenarios as well. But it's also another uh, scenario for um, pest infestation, which is also another major point that we want to go ahead and talk about. Uh, pet infestations um, could be anything from, you know, cockroaches, rats, fleas, ticks, uh, things of that nature. Now, uh, having a... Uh, Pest infestation is a very, very serious scenario. Um, and individually, any one of these things are, are annoying at the very least. But whenever you have a combination of situations, this is really something that can um, cause a lot of illness and a lot of potential diseases that can be transferred, uh, especially with the whole rat droppings, which again, whenever you have a hoarding situation, it's very likely um, that you have the perfect set of circumstances to have uh, rats basically come into the home. Home. And we'll get a little bit more into that issue because there's also some building safety issues um, that have to do with rats as well, which we'll talk about here in just a second. The other major point is plumbing issues, right? And for some reason, plumbing issues aren't something that are the first thing that you think of when you're thinking about a hoarding situation, right? But this is something that happens a lot, which is clogs, uh, sewer backups, and of course, needless to say, a lot of water damage uh, happens to take place with it because of any of these situations, right? So the reason why clogs happen quite a bit in hoarder homes is because there's so many belongings, so many little things that are literally stacked, sometimes ceiling high, and you eventually start running out of space, right? So you have your countertops, um, which eventually lead into the sink, which eventually go uh, into the bathroom areas and then around toilets. And it's really only a matter of time, especially if uh, the homeowner has pets um, or, the, or the tenant has pets. Um, it's only a matter of time before something gets knocked over and basically goes down a drain pipe and causes some major backups uh, and or water damage, which then could also lead uh, to potential mold growth on the drywall, cabinets, vanities, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then the next thing is really just building safety. Now, what are we talking about building safety? Well, this is multifold, right? So first and foremost, building safety, um, as in, the, is the building really safe for the person who's living there to continue to live there, right? Um, building, having a hoarding situation could really cause a lot of issues with, with uh, mobility and just your ability to get from one room to the next. Also, it's a matter of just overall safety. Can you easily get in and out of the property in the situation? Uh, where um, you know you really need speed, right? Are your windows blocked off? Are your exits blocked off, right? Things like that. Um, another scenario um, that happens with building safety in a hoarding situation is leading back to the rat scenario is where if there is been if there's been a situation where rats have already made their way through uh, and living inside of the walls, um, well, again, you have a lot of electrical components there. You have wiring and rats have a tendency to start chewing through said wiring. This can cause not only electrical failure, but could also cause electrical fires, which again, going back to the whole mobility situation with regards to building safety, if first responders have a hard time getting in and around, um, you know, the property in order to be able to save somebody's life, this could definitely be a major, major problem, um, especially if someone's trying to get out of the property under those types of situations, right? So making sure that, um, you know, the situation is taken care of, everything is cleaned um, and organized is extremely important, not only from a health perspective, but also just as an overall building safety uh, standpoint to make sure that you can get in and out of the property and that you eliminate some of the associated risks of fire uh, and things of that nature. And then of course, the very last thing is just getting back to healthy and getting back to safety, right? And that's exactly what it is that we do here at Ecotech Pro. And we do this by uh, by doing several things, right? Number one, uh, removing any kind of harmful um, contaminants from the overall environment, uh, making sure that we clean and sanitize, that we declutter and remove uh, things from the property that simply don't need to be there any longer, um, deodorize and sanitize. Um, as well as just creating an overall clean and safe living environment for the homeowner and or the tenant and making sure that we bring building safety back to where it needs to be. So that way you're in the best possible position um, And of course, the last thing is all about getting back to healthy and getting back to building safety, right? Now, how do we do that? Well, at Ecotech Pro, what we do is we help with every single aspect of getting the, um, you know, taking care of the hoarding situation and getting back to healthy and getting back to safety. And part of this is A, removing, de uh, you know, contaminated material, um, deodorizing and sanitizing. Uh, if in the event that there is any kind of microbial or mold growth, that we go ahead and eliminate that. We we obviously declutter the space and provide for just a safe and suitable living condition. So if you or someone you know um, has a hoarding situation that they're looking to go ahead and take care of, I would strongly encourage you to go ahead and pick up the phone, shoot us a call, or send us an email or a DM on whatever social media network. And that way we can discuss the overall project and see how we can be of service to you and get everything taken care of and back to a safe and suitable living condition. Hope that helps. And I look forward to speaking to you guys soon.